Good morning, everybody, and happy Mother's Day to all the mamas here this morning. Um, I was teasing my husband when he told me I want you to speak on Mother's Day, and I said, wait a minute, something's wrong with that picture. You're going to make me work on Mother's Day. <laughs> but gladly I do it, and it's an honor to be here today. And I just want to thank the Lord for two beautiful women sitting up here in front. The first one is my mama, who is going to be a young age of 94 in July. She was, uh, yes, give her a round of applause. She was in ministry for 68 years with my dad. Uh, I was born and raised in a church, I've been born and raised in a church all my life. Uh, all my diapers in those days were stamped with uh, Assemblies of God <laughs> because my father was an Assemblies of God pastor. And they say that behind a great man, there's a greater woman. Mama was it. Behind my dad, prayer, support, was always there for him. She, too, taught in Sunday school. She, too, she too uh, did missionettes. She also played the piano. She did all those things. And sometimes we forget. We put see the pastor and we forget the wife. But I thank the Lord this morning for my mama that has prayed us through and is always there for us. And, and so I love you, mamita, very much. Sister Lucy, you're so special in my life, too. You are to be admired. You're a great example of a woman of God. You've been there with us from the get-go back to, well, you've been there longer, well, longer than 40 years that we've been pastoring, but you've always been there with us. During the good times and good, during the not so good times, you've always been there for us. You've supported us. You've prayed for us. You've helped us in ministry. You've been there for us. And I sure have enjoyed working in the COF bookstore. We had fun. This beautiful lady, uh, she decided she didn't have anything else to do at home, retirement, okay? <laughs> so uh, uh, Pastor Kat told me that she was going to be working in the bookstore. I said, oh, my mom loves books, and I do too, so let's go help her. So several Wednesdays, we haven't done it as of late, but several Wednesdays we'd get out there, and we had fun. We had fun, and that just goes to show that she's got a servant's heart. So I appreciate you so much too, Sister Lucy, and love you very much. Very special to this church. Today is Mother's Day, and I have a passion for women. I think because throughout the 40 years, well, actually longer than that, but the 40 years that I came into reality of what ministry was all about, it was seeing women that struggle to be everything God wants them to be. And my husband teases me often when I'm going to do, when we're going to do women's conferences or women's luncheons or women's something. He says, you're always trying to pick up the woman. She's always crying. She's always feeling sorry for herself. She's always, I can't, I can't, I can't. I said, okay, women are different from men. We get it, okay? <laughs> but that's just who we are. We're sensitive people. But sometimes our past, sometimes where we come from, sometimes whatever circumstance keeps us from moving forward. We see others and they say, oh, well, you've got it made. In my case, you were born and raised in church. Of course you're going to be a Christian. Of course you're going to be a good person. Of course, of course, of course. Well, praise the Lord for that, but that doesn't mean the rest can't be everything God wants them to be. Today, I'm going to share two stories with you just to remind you about the love of God, about the love of God and his mercy and how we are his creation. Psalm 139 says we were wonderfully made. There's a little... Uh, I've seen it, you've seen it, a, a little poster of a cute little guy. I just love that picture, and it just says, I'm somebody special because God don't make no junk. And you know what? That is true. If you can believe it, and I believe it, God said it, there's no reason why we can go on and be something special in the eyes of God. Every single person in here, man and woman, you all have a special calling for something in the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord that we don't all do the same thing because then it would be boring. But because each of you have your own unique talents, your own unique gifts, we can be powerful in the kingdom of God. In 1955, April the 7th, a young lady was born into a home. 
she became the fourth uh, child in that particular home. So it was mom and dad and four children. Well, should have been that way. But as it was, this young lady was born into a home, yes, of six. She says, but for some reason of, of which I still don't know, she said, my house was always full of people. Always full of people. She says, at any given time, there was a good 24 people in my house. And she says, don't think we had big houses. If you remember way back in the day of 1955, and those were usually two-bedroom homes or three-bedroom homes at most, if you were lucky, one bathroom. Imagine 24 people going through one bathroom. Maybe two if you were blessed. She says, I don't know why there was always people in our home, but there was. There was a, always the uncles, the aunts, the cousins, the who knows what. They didn't have anywhere to go. And so they were always there to eat, to sleep. She says, I never knew half of the people that were there. She says, but as a result of that, she says, because in my home, we were bilingual. For some reason, we became interpreters for some of the uncles. We would sometimes go with them to court for something. We didn't even know what was going on half of the time. She says, keep in mind, we were kids. And this is a very dear friend of mine that I was interviewing you last week. That was telling me her story. And she says, as a result of all this dysfunction, my father was an alcoholic. My mom did the best she could sewing, selling at swap meets, doing what she could just to keep everything afloat. But as a result of this dysfunctional home, she said there was really no time for us as children. There was no family unit. We didn't know what love was. We didn't know what caring was. We didn't know uh, what it was to be in a, in a home, a stable home. She says, you know, when I got married, and my husband and I went out to, our, to the restaurant to eat. He ordered a steak. And I told him, the steak came beautifully presented on the plate. And she says, and you get to eat all of that? He looked at her, well, yeah, I mean, I ordered my steak, you know. She says, why do you ask? He says, because we never had meat in our house. There was never enough. She says, Believe it or not, after a while, I became like a little puppy in the corner. No one to give me guidance, no one to give me direction, nobody to care if I came or went. She says, it became a house of lunatics, literally. It became crazy. She says in her story, and she says, as I was getting older, I said, I'm not going to be like these crazy people in this house. I'm going to be something better than that. She says, so my, my refuge was in school. I would get myself up and I would go to school. I loved school. I loved books. I loved that. That was my haven. She said, I did really good until I met this guy at the age of 14. And again, because of her upbringing, and again, because of what she lacked, she fell madly in love with this young man. He became her savior. He became her prince. She gave everything and anything he wanted to her, or rather she to him, to him. She says, I thought he was it. If he wanted something, I'd find a way to buy it. As she got a little bit older, she went to work. And she says, if anything he wanted, he got it. He was my savior. He was the supposed love that I never knew. He supposedly cared for me. He supposedly did for me. Five years later, he walked out of my life and went into someone else's life. I couldn't handle that. She said, I could not handle that. I felt rejection. Here I am again, alone, and nobody took care. I turned to alcohol. I became an alcoholic. I turned to drugs. Valium, the highest dosage they would give me, I became a nothing, an absolutely lost soul. To the point, she said that one day, she says, I'm out of here. She did not actually live with a guy during the five years of their relationship, but she was with him all the time, so now he abandons her, he goes with somebody else, and so now she's left by herself in her home. And she says, I hate it here. 
She said, I became very angry, angry with God, angry with people, angry in general because of what happened to me. I was a nothing again. And she said, one day I said, I've had enough. My mom loved birds, so she had a bunch of bird cages. I was so angry, I went and I hit them all and got rid of all the birds and I just got in the car and she said, I'm going to commit suicide. And God forbid anybody stand in my way because I'm going to run them down too. That's how angry she was. She got in the car. She hit the five freeway, hoping and praying that she could run into a cement wall just to end it all. But guess what? The car ran out of gas. If that isn't God, I don't know what it is. Sparing her life. So, praise the Lord, she did not die in that crash. But she still kept on with her life of sin, her life of desperation, her life of nothingness, to the point that she ended up in the hospital. And the doctor said, truly, there's nothing else I can do for this young girl. Take her home, because all she wants to do is die. And that was the truth. That's all I wanted to do was just die. So one day, this lady calls my mom. Turned out it was her mom's comadre, who was a Christian. And I answered the phone, and she says, Gloria, I've been thinking about you. She says, I didn't have a single thing good to sell her. I cussed her out. I literally cussed her out. She didn't say anything. She just listened to me cussing her out. And she just said, Gloria, I just want you to know I'm thinking about you, and I'm praying for you, and I love you. When she said that, it just pierced my heart to hear that somebody loved me. I had never heard those words before. Not from my mom, not from my dad, not from anybody. So I hung up the phone and thought about it, and it was really starting to affect me. So I thought, well, I know that my mom's comadre was a Christian, so a few days later, I called her. She says, okay, I know you're, you're, you're a hallelujah. I know you go to a hallelujah church. I don't want to go there. But I'll go anywhere else you tell me to go. She says, because to me, going to her type of church was a cult. I didn't know any better. But finally, she gave in, and she says, okay, I'll go wherever you tell me. Tell me where and when. So she did. By this time, she says, I was so ready for something. I didn't know what. And she gave her heart to the Lord that night. And her story is so similar to the Samaritan woman in the Bible. John chapter 4. If you would like to read it at a later time in your home, read the whole chapter of how the Samaritan woman was despised in her village because she too had lived an immoral life. She had been married five times and was living with a sixth one. So she avoided going to the well as much as possible. Most of the time, the ladies would go to the well early in the morning and then early in the evening while it was, when it, was cool, it started to cool down. But she went right at the peak of day at noon, hoping not to see anyone because she said only reputable women went to the well in the morning, and she didn't want to be gossiped, but she knew that if she went, they were going to start talking about her. To her surprise, there was this person, this man, that was walking, walking through Samaria, Sakar, the name of the community or the area there, on his way to Jerusalem, I mean, I mean on his way to Galilee, and stopped there and said, give me some water. She looked up at him, and she says, are you talking to me? Yeah, give me some water. She says, don't you know who I am? She says, you're a Jew, I'm a Samaritan. We're supposed to hate each other. You never talk to me. She says, ah, but the water that I want, the water that you need is the water of living life. If you give it to me, you will never thirst again. Her thought was, wow, if I drink his water, then I don't have to come to the well anymore. She says, no, that's not the water that I'm talking about. But sir, how can I give you the water that you tell me you don't even have 
anything to pull it out of the well with. She says, because that's not the kind of water that I'm giving you. It's a water that you will not thirst again. Keeping in mind that in, the, in Samaria, the women were considered inferior to the man, so they never spoke to each other. They never spoke to Samaritans. The Samaritans and the Jews hated each other. Especially, they would even speak less, especially to a woman of her reputation. But he told her, if you, give, if you let me, or if you drink of the water that I give you, you will never thirst again. So you're probably wondering this morning, so what does all of these stories have to do with Mother's Day? I came to the conclusion this week, and I told my husband, I said, you know what, honey? We have invited people to come to church. We have people to come every Sunday to church. But not all of them are going to be able to celebrate Mother's Day the way we would want to. They may not have families to celebrate with here. Or they may feel that they're not the ideal mom. Or they might be going through situations. Maybe the husband walked out on this, this month or this week and just left them hanging there. Maybe they're moms that are moms and dads. That's double duty. And I admire you for having to, do, to, having to go on ahead in spite of. I said, so what I want to do today, folks, is leave you with a thought that God is here for you and he wants you to drink from his living water. Water in general in the physical, when you go to the doctor for an ailment of sorts, the doctor will say, and don't forget, drink a lot of water. Why does he tell you that? Because water purifies. Water cleans. Water gets junk out of our system. Is that not correct? So this is the same thing. God wants to give you of his living water to purify you, to make you whole. He forgives you. He redeems you. He loves you like never before. So today I want to reach out to you, man or woman, but we are directing ourselves a little bit more today to the lady to say if you're here today and you have found that Today is not a good Mother's Day for me, for whatever the reason might be. Maybe you don't feel that you were a good mom. Maybe you were betrayed. Maybe your kids hate you. I don't know how many of you folks saw 2020 this past Friday. If you saw it, raise your hand. I was thinking about that as I was preparing for today's message. She was a lady that literally abandoned three children. She didn't just not be there for them. She would have them and still with the umbilical cord tied to them, would take them, put them in a paper bag, and put them where the public could see them so somebody would take those babies. She did this three times. When they finally found her, the kids by this time are grown up, they're adults, they're married, they have families of their own, and they started to investigate through an agent. I'd like to know who my mom is, and I'd like to find out why. When they finally found the lady and they interviewed her, first the children, especially the oldest one, forgave her for being abandoned, for being rejected, for just putting her. One of them was put in front of a trash can in a paper bag for somebody to find. The other one was found at a doorstep of somebody's house. And the third one, same thing, out in the street but in a public place where the lady knew they were going to be found. But when she was interviewed by herself, she says, why? Why? How could you do that? She said, because I was living a life. I'd gotten involved with somebody. Well, she got involved three times with somebody's, because each father was a different man. And I knew that I was up to no good. So I want it better for my children, but I can't believe they have found me and they still tell me they love me. So you, can you imagine the guilt that lady felt for what she had done? Can you imagine what things have happened? She knew that. So this morning, I want to appeal to you if you are here this morning with whatever situation you may have, and you say, I really need to drink 
of the living water that Jesus gives me. I really need to be forgiven for my sins. I really need to be redeemed. I really need to be loved. I want you to come forward this morning because we want to pray for you. There are happy endings to our stories. Gloria married a beautiful man. She's now a pastor's wife. Has three grown sons that just graduated from the university. They're all in ministry with them. They're all in ministry with them. The Samaritan woman ran back into the village and she says, Come! We, the Messiah, has come. Come! He's going to tell you all about yourselves. She won the whole village for the Lord. She became the spokeswoman. She's been redeemed. She's been saved. She's been forgiven. She's been given love, and I want that for you this morning. So as every head is bowed and every eye is closed, I'm going to ask Pastor to come up, and I want two prayers to be prayed this morning. First of all, if you've never accepted the Lord in your heart, if Christ has not become the center of your life and you would like that this morning, I would like for you to come forward. We would like to pray for you. Perhaps you do know the Savior. Perhaps you know him, but you've got a lot of issues that don't allow you to move forward, that don't allow you to live a life of victory. And you say, I need to drink that living water this morning. I need to drink it so bad. I want you to come forward as well. As every head is bowed and every eye is closed, now is the time to come forward. Nobody's going to ask you any questions. Nobody's going to judge. We just simply want to pray for you this morning. That as you walk out of this place, you can say, I've met the master. I would like for the women leadership, please, to come forward and help me. Pray for these beautiful women as they come forward. Don't wait a moment longer. Today is your day. Boy, I want you to walk out of here feeling so good about yourself and say, I too will walk with a master. Pastor. Keep coming. If the Lord has spoken to you today and you know that you have the opportunity this morning of receiving him to drink of that living water. This is serious. Maybe you've gone through something or something has occurred as my wife has said. This is your opportunity to find an answer in Christ. This is nothing about religion. It's about you and him. About a relationship. You need him in your life. So come. Give your life to Christ. That's what it's all about. Those two ladies that my wife mentioned this morning, both of them had discovered, discovered what it is, what joy it is to serve him and to be a part of his life. So this morning, you're being invited to give your life to him. Somebody else? Thank God for those that have come forward this morning, those that are surrendering, those that are giving their life to him. Those of you that are in the front that came for the first time, I want to pray with you. <clears throat> and I'm going to pray that Jesus Christ will not make himself real to you. In Jesus' name, Father, make the Lord be real to them. That they can sense his presence, feel the touch of that love, feel the embrace of him that loves them more than they will ever know. Jesus, embrace these precious ones. As this morning, Lord God, you minister to them and you let them know how much you love them. Would you pray this prayer with me? Would you pray this prayer out loud? Would you confess it? I'm going to say the words and you repeat them after me. And we pray that you will find that peace that passes all understanding. Say, Jesus, I want you to say it again. Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I give you all that I am. 
come into my life and change me. Make me be a new person. Guide me every day to do the things that please you. So Lord, I thank you this morning because you always hear the prayers of those that need you. I need you now. And I thank you for responding to my prayer. I receive you as my Lord and Savior with all of my heart. Thank you, Jesus. Father, just take care of these precious ones. Watch over them. Protect them, Lord God. Bring joy to their heart now. May the joy of the Lord come into their heart and may peace come into their heart right now. And a sense of, I am special. I am special. Because, Lord, of what you are doing in their life. Bless their home. Bless their marriages. Bless their children. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for what he's doing in your life. Do me a favor before you go back to your chair. I would love and appreciate if you'd follow this lady to my left. This young man as well, they want to take him to a room. and want to give you a word of counsel. We want to pray with you. So please turn and follow them. And I know that they will bless you in the name of the Lord. It's wonderful to experience Christ. Amen, brothers and sisters. It is wonderful to experience Christ. All of a sudden, just, wow, yeah, it feels good. Yes, it feels good because the Lord himself has come into your life. Praise God. Amen.